I think active learning occurs any time a student goes beyond the passive listening, note-taking mode and starts to question things and ruminate on things in their own mind. Sometimes it goes beyond that to speaking with other people. Active learning is a huge umbrella, which it absolutely should be, uh, but it covers a lot of different activities that, in, that include things uh, done in class, include things done out of class, that in my interpretation include things done uh, active mechanically and physically, and active with a partner or with groups, and include things that are actively done by oneself and quietly, actually, that there's active learning that's done that way. And when you think about active learning that way, uh, you can serve a lot of different students who are able to learn and gain knowledge in a lot of different ways. For me, active learning is any time the instructor stops talking and expects students to do something that requires them to think. And so I always tell my students that we can all think. I've just been thinking longer than you have about this kind of stuff, but you can easily come up with these ideas if you all sit down and think about it. As a teacher, it's just a lot more interesting um, when you have these, this sort of uncertainty that you throw out when people are really thinking and they're not passive. Because you see them start to work and to think and to, to, to work together. For me, um, active learning is any type of strategy that you can use to engage students and to meet them where they are and to bring them along. It's, I guess, creating a dialogue rather than a monologue of the professor standing up and giving a lecture um, where, you know, students really feel free to contribute their own ideas um, in the class. In the end, because engagement is there, if it's true active learning and engagement is there, the pace of learning actually goes much faster because students are assimilating that knowledge and processing it and putting it in place in their brains in ways that uh, is probably much more effective and much more concrete than in other methods. When you're thinking about integrating active learning, one of the important things to consider is, what is it that I really want students to leave this course being able to do when they walk out the door and I, know, I don't see them again for five years? What do I want to ask them to do or to say or to address that I really think it's important for them to still know? And those are the things to focus on in our classrooms. And those are the things to build active learning experiences around. And so I think that's more the role that, that, that I need to, to take in the classroom is to define these core concepts that, that, they, that they need to understand. And so when you're setting learning objectives for your course, we urge people to aim higher. We want students to be able to analyze data. We want students to be able to solve problems, not simply remember uh, all of the steps in the CREP cycle. When our students go to upper division, courses and they see material that they may have seen briefly in, in an active learning classroom. And they say, oh, I feel so much better prepared to look at this at a deeper level now. And so I think the role as the, of the instructor is a facilitator of their synthesis and their learning. And anytime you want to communicate with somebody, anytime you want to give, get something from somebody, you, know, you have to give them incentive to give that to you. What I want to get from my students is their involvement and their investment in actually learning. And the only way I can get them to give that to me is to give them what they want also. And one of the things I think they want is to feel like they are actually valued, that they are not just coming in as empty vessels and have to take you know, what I give, that they come in with experiences with some base of knowledge and some level of intellect and that they can actually contribute you know, to the process somehow. What do they already know? If they already know what are the learning objectives, that I, I have set out for the course, I don't spend a lot of time teaching that. Instead, I move on to something that they're struggling with, and I try to respond instructionally to where my students are. Some way you have to get um, information about what students have gained or potentially not gained <laughs> from the experience. And I don't take their failure as being their problem all the time. I have to look at what I'm doing. I do love when misconceptions come out because then when students learn off their own mistake, they actually learn the thing, right? If I tell them this is something you guys think, but it's not correct, here's really how it goes. They don't learn that. For me, having that data about 
what they are understanding and what they're still misunderstanding, and then taking that next step to actually act on it. I think that for me, that's what turns it into student-centered classroom. So uh, collecting the assessment data, uh, the pre or post, or, or both if, if it's really great, if you're able to. And then when something is not lining up in the, that assessment, being able to, you know, first thing the next class maybe, actually directly address that. So there are ways to collect information. It's not necessarily graded, but you can get feedback and then you can adjust your plan. You know, if the captain of the Titanic had adjusted his plan along the way, well, we wouldn't have that movie. But the point being that sticking to the plan is not necessarily the best idea when you can collect data along the way. So assessment is something where we need to move away from thinking about it only being about exams and giving grades and moving it towards being a critical tool for learning, oftentimes the basis of active learning. I have a very hard time even thinking of an active learning exercise to do if I don't have the assessment in mind. And more often than not, the active learning exercise, whatever it is that students are doing, is actually itself a form of assessment. And so by doing that active learning exercise, either through the observation of myself observing the students or through something that the students are producing, I'm getting some form of assessment of to, as to where those students are and where they need to get to. You can always have them answer a few questions, write down what they learned. Um, there's a, like a, using an index card of what's clear, what's still confusing at the end of a class. So um, simple assessments or more formal sort of exam type assessments. And that's the, one of the joys of active learning for me is to find out more about what's happening inside students' heads. The kind of teaching that we're advocating is really built around three points to keep in mind if one is planning a course, for example. First is defining the objectives. What do you really want students to be able to do at the end of this course? And the second thing is how are you going to know if they reach those objectives? So you have to design or find an appropriate assessment that will tell you how well the students are doing. And then the third thing is you have to decide, well, how am I best going to use class time so that students actually reach these objectives? And an additional consideration is that all these things must be aligned properly. That is, you have to have what you do in class has to reflect what you're going to give on the assessments uh, for, for questions, and that has to reflect the learning objectives that you told students about at the start of the course. It doesn't really matter the form of teaching that the person is doing, as long as they're reflective about what they're doing and the choices that they've made. I mean, the people we're talking about are all scientists, so they're used to experimentation. So I, I think that every faculty member should be willing to do some experiments. Say you've lectured for 40 years and you've got your lecture notes all prepared. Well, how about trying a two-week experiment with something else? Rather than talk in theory and hypotheticals, in the next video we'll give you very practical ways that you can figure out how to engage your students to increase their learning and not help them memorize, regurgitate, forget, because we all know that's not very meaningful.